My name is Sandy, and I'm happy to be here today, and I'm going to talk about the voice of God. It's a very big subject. Well, the voice of God can be booming and dramatic, or it can be very, very subtle and quiet. And the voice of God that comes to me personally is multifaceted just like that. That sometimes I actually do hear a voice. Or because I'm more visual, I see words written in the sky, like in a dream or in prayer, and I definitely get the message. (laughs) But I'm going to read a... um, a quote from the Bible about, this is from 1 Kings. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks, but God was not in the wind. After that was an earthquake, but he wasn't in the earthquake. After that came a fire, but God was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. That's the voice of God. And sometimes it's so subtle that it's hard to decipher and sometimes for me it just feels like a thought but I can kind of tell if I really tune into the feeling it's a freeing thought or an uplifting inspiring thought. It's like a thought that gives me hope or that gives me life force. And sometimes it will give me like fire, like inspiration, like energy to get up and go for it, to do what the voice is telling me to do. And then I feel really motivated and good. But generally, what, what God says to us is positive. He's an encouraging, benevolent being. And he doesn't want to discourage us. He wants to encourage us. He wants to give us joy. He wants to give us his love. And he wants to give us guidance. But sometimes he'll, he'll give a warning, like, don't do that. And if you get that kind of warning, if it's for reals, please listen. <laughs> I know I've gotten warnings like that and not listened, <laughs> I got the consequences eventually, but then I kind of landed on a, a soft place because of his love. But anyways, I've heard the voice of God in very dramatic moments and dramatic times that really affected my life. Like, in the very beginning, when I was first starting on a spiritual path, we went out to the mountains in Arizona, and I was alone for a while, and I heard this magnificent voice kind of coming out of the air in the mountains, and the voice said, I want you. And I knew it was God's voice, and I knew that he wanted me to devote my life to him. That was just my heart feeling. I understood. And then I saw an image of myself in a long white robe, which didn't make any sense to me at all. (laughs) I didn't even know anybody that wore long white robes. But eventually I did end up wearing a long white robe. (laughs) We all did. (laughs) for a while, and that was a a sweet phase in our lives. So the, the voice can come in different ways. It can come through dreams and visions and through angels. That angels are real and they come and talk to us and minister to us. But sometimes we don't see them, and every once in a while we do see them. One time, I I had this 
kind of crazy idea in my head. And I'll share it with you because you can see how unrealistic it was that the beautiful ranch, Coho, was for sale. And it's a beautiful land that is precious to all of us. And we didn't want to see it developed and kind of like taken advantage of. So I was honestly kind of revving up to try to raise money to buy that ranch. And I had no clue how I could possibly do it. But I thought, well, all things are possible, right? So I'll try it. <laughs> Sometimes I go a little bit over the top with my positive projections. <laughs> sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But this time, an angel actually came to me in the evening right before I went to sleep. And he said, Sandy, don't do it. And he explained to me why. It just... It wasn't a realistic proposition. It wasn't something that I was given to do. It was my own mind. And several months later, my prayers were answered in a different way because some very wealthy, benevolent people in Santa Barbara donated the money to buy that land for the uh, nature conservation. So it, it is cherished, it is cared for. And sometimes the surfers can still sneak on and surf if you're careful, but don't get caught. <laughs> the security guys are kind of gnarly. But anyways, that was to me divine guidance and very true. And I, I knew... The angel was so real to me, there was no mistaking that that was truly divine guidance. And I took it seriously. But I, I love listening, and I try to ask for God to speak to me or to bring me a sign or bring me answers. And I know... He listens to our prayers, and he responds to us in one way or the other. He doesn't always respond in the most obvious way or the way that we're hoping for, but there's almost always some kind of a response. Even if the answer is no, it's still a response. But what's awesome is that you can ask God, of course, about big things, about major life changes, about the meaning of life, whatever. But you can also ask him to help you find your keys <laughs> or to open something that you can't open. Whatever it is, simple little things, he's very present and very capable of communicating to us or helping us in multiple ways. I know a lot of times he'll answer my prayers to another person or his voice, I feel like, will come to another person as an inspiration, as a validation, which is really sweet, or as a warning. Or just in many different ways, that voice will communicate and I feel treasured that he watches over me. And there are so many people that love God that seriously care about all of us, that care about each other. It blows my mind because sometimes if someone shows me the incredible caring and love that God has for all of us, I think, Oh, that was so amazing. And I go back and say, thank you. you know? And they're like, oh, no worries. I always do that. Because that's the love. That's the unconditional love that he put in each heart. When we love God, we love each other. And we, we care about everybody. We care about 
the people in our lives and the people in our family on a personal level that we have a benevolent love and caring and kind of like an all-inclusive prayer that goes out to all beings, basically. I know that's how I feel, and I'm sure that's how you feel, too. Anyways, um, there's a lot of ways that you can check it out. If you feel like you need discernment, if you really want to know whether this is truly the voice of God or if this is coming from somewhere else, I mean, sometimes you just got to use your common sense. And I've actually had that as the answer to a prayer before. And it was wonderful because, I mean, just reasoning power can sometimes bring you the solution if you use it. But not that long ago, I was really going through it because I had two different options and I was trying to make a choice. And I was praying, you know, with heartfelt prayers, you know, please help me choose. And I heard a voice and it said, use your common sense. (laughs) So I did, and I got the right solution. (laughs) I don't usually get that guidance, but (laughs) it works. And other simple things, like if you're getting guidance from God, it's going to be an uplifting guidance and advice that fits in with your moral standards, with your sense of integrity and love and respect for other people. That God will never advise us to hurt another person deliberately or to do something that is exceedingly selfish. That is the other voice that we can just kind of dissolve and listen to the higher voice. And that's the voice that sings inside of us. So um, I'll tell one more little story that I absolutely love. I'm kind of a nature gal, and I have had many adventures out in nature that I have really enjoyed. And um, I'll share one more adventure. And that is, a group of us went up to Big Sur, and we had one guy that was leading us to this very special spot where we could jump off a big rock into the river. And the river was really high, and the current was super strong. And we had like several crossings, like there must have been at least seven crossings. <laughs> People were really having trouble getting across the river. And my son and my hubby were with us, and so they were kind of helping the, the younger people and the older people across the river. And uh, it was a great adventure, but we finally got up there, and uh, I was just like so excited, and I had never jumped into that river before, but it was literally, it was like ice melt. It was straight from the melted snow. This was in the spring in Big Sur, and we had gone up pretty high. And I was right at the precipice. I was ready to go up on the rock, and the person before me had just jumped. And I had brought my wetsuit that I use for the ocean because I'm very cold-natured. And the water was so cold. And I got it out, and literally, I felt the presence. And the voice said, don't put it on. (laughs) Just go up there and jump. And I listened. And I, I went up there, and it was like divine timing to the max. It was this really sweet young gal had just jumped off and come back up to the rock, and she showed me the the magic formula of how to do it and be safe. She said, look, there's a submerged rock here. There's another submerged rock there. You have to land in between those two big rocks. 
And so I did. But she was the one that kind of made it all happen for me. And she was there because the timing clicked just right. So anyways, he'll come when you need him. And all you got to do is just open your heart and create that intention that you really want to listen and kind of tune, tune your soul to hear that voice and to recognize and to act on that voice. Anyways, we're going to have some songs, I mean some bowls from Nicole. The bowls are like a song. And then we'll have a prayer and a meditation.
God's voice <clears throat> can come in so many different ways. <clears throat> and one way that it can speak is through us. We can speak words of encouragement, of comforting, of healing love, of prayer, and of gratitude. We have been given the power and the blessing of the spoken word. And that word can give life or it can destroy. We must use it for the good. In a positive way. In a healing way. To help this world. I know sometimes I'll hear things that are beautiful about someone. And instead of keeping it to myself, I'll go to that person and I'll share the admiration and the love that I feel and that other people feel for them. And sometimes it makes a big difference. I have a young friend that used to help me in the house and we would talk together. And she was telling me about her family and she told me about her mom. She said her mom was her hero. That her mom was the one that supported the family. And that she really respects her so much and looks up to her. So I went to her mom and I told her And she started to cry because she didn't know that. Her daughter had never been able to say that to her, but she could say it to me. And it just made her so happy. But it's such a wonderful thing to share the goodness and the love that's there. I got to quote Missy. She says, Love is magic. It heals the person that you give it to. (laughs) And I do think that's true. And oftentimes, words can bring the love. They can express that love. Just like flowers. I've read a lot of books and received many gems from them. And um, one of them is from Dale Carnegie, and he says, 
We never use the three C's with our words. We never complain or criticize or condemn. Instead, we forgive, we give praise, and we say thank you. That empowers the good in other people, and it gives them life. It gives them what they need to make the right choices. And if somebody is not doing that, we can actually help them by giving them a very subtle push. And it doesn't necessarily have to be through words out loud. Steve and I always say prayers before we eat out loud. And he always says exactly the same prayer. (laughs) I have it memorized. (laughs) And every time I think it's beautiful because it's his universal love and goodwill towards humankind. And I always share what's on my heart at the moment. But there's something really magical about sharing those words with God and with your mate and with your friends. So I'm going to draw to a close and I'll say a little prayer and then we'll have some more beautiful songs. Please pray with me. Beloved God, thank you for your voice, for your sacred wisdom, and for your love. Please plant that love and that wisdom within us. Let us heed your word and share your love. Thank you. Amen. Listen to life's sweet song Can't you hear how she longs For perfection like in days that are gone So sweet and oh so sad So sweet and oh so sad Father Turning round all around 
around us without a sound And they're spinning within us too Oh, I can feel the love, can't you? Oh, I can feel the love, can't you? Father, you're melting us all into one bright shining And we've all had the blues much too long So we're all going back home to you I'm going home to the sea of love Won't you come on along with me and ride the stars above And ride the stars above Father, you're melting us all Shining, blazing sun And we've all had the blues much too long So we're all going back home to you Yes, we've all had the blues much too long So we're all